Hey y'all. Good morning. It's kind of a drizzly, rainy morning today, so kind of just spending the day in bed and um, reading. And while I'm reading, it's kind of hard for me not to get distracted by some of the metaphors and the details of um, what this this author is saying because um, she's clearly from another generation, which means that her idea of values and her idea of cultural and social interactions is excuse me is different from mine or from that of my generation or from that of a generation of people who are more conscious about how they um, how they speak and how they refer to other people so let's get intimate let's have this pillow talk because she is slut shaming <laughs> I know that she probably would say that she isn't and she would say get over it which you know it's called get over your damn self so of course she would say get over it that's the generation that she came from so no blame no shame in the game <laughs> just a fact of life that she is she's using the word slut as like a metaphor in the book okay so her tools and tips that she's giving to people for um, running a small business which I'm currently doing right now is to not um, expose everything or expose all of the details on the first first interaction the first meeting the first time that um, you have a conversation about your business and I understand that it's a metaphor but she's also saying literally just like you wouldn't expose too much skin on our first date in an attempt to in an attempt to not be considered a slut you don't want to expose too much of your business on your first interaction and be what does she call it specifically a prospecting slut so <laughs> you can tell how I feel about this just using the word slut really gets me going and especially now that I am STI positive and openly STI positive um, I used to think that only sluts got STDs and STIs only people who are promiscu promiscuous and um, super sexually active but that is not true as far as I'm personally concerned and as far as the only other person who I know has an STI as well is concerned because she's somebody that I know from my past who um, I saw her again recently and we talked about how you know when um, when we used to hang out and interact before um, she used to sleep with a lot more people and she was what you would call promiscuous because you know she um, would be bringing home a different person many nights of the week so it was it became like a running joke for us probably not for her so much definitely not for her because when we talked about it I could tell that it had hurt her and I could tell that it had affected her um, and I apologize because I was like man I was going through some shit in my relationship then so I was the one who was insecure 
I was the one who was um, my boyfriend at the time um, was withholding sex from me and or um, just making a big deal about certain things that I was insecure about so I pushed my insecurity off onto her by counting the amount of people that she was sleeping with and now it was just a joke at the time and my friend and I would um, you know kind of discuss it sometimes and we definitely slut shamed her not by intention and not without um, at least a large portion of her consent because um, we said it to her I mean we said it to her face we we talked to her about it and we turned it into like a mutual joke that we all shared except she was the butt of the joke so she was the slut she was the one who we made it very clear about how different what she was doing was from what we were doing what she was doing was very different from what we were doing because we were both in committed relationships so we were fine I guess like living through the idea of and not actually living it ourselves but living through the idea of sleeping with a lot of different people because we hadn't done that that wasn't something that we had ever done or you know could do at the time because we were in relationships so we slut shamed her for sure and when I saw her again recently um, she said that yeah after that period of time it just stopped and I I got into a committed relationship and then I was sexually assaulted and from that sexual assault I got an STI it wasn't because she was a slut that she got an STI she didn't contract something out of um, carelessness or out of um, promiscuity or out of her own sexual liberation that she was experiencing at the time she got it because somebody fucking attacked her and forced themselves on her so STIs and STDs don't have anything to do with being sexually promiscuous or sleeping with a lot of people it's not a numbers game it's not a numbers game as I've found out because <laughs> my numbers haven't gone past 12 12 13 hmm I don't remember but it's uh, it's not a numbers game it's not about being a slut and I guess it just really bothers me that um, this the word slut is being used in this book um, as a metaphor as an analogy when I feel like there are a lot of other metaphors and a lot of other analogies that could have been used there are so many other friggin metaphors that could have been used other than talking about people who like to expose a lot of skin or maybe their first date is a day at the beach that doesn't mean that you're a fucking slut if you agree to that or maybe it's her idea of a typical first date okay so dinner and drinks anyone is entitled to wear exactly what makes them feel comfortable and expose however much skin they want to expose doesn't have anything to do with how they feel about sex I know that's hard to digest because there are still times when I look at people who are showing a lot of skin and I'm like 
I mean, not that I think they're asking for it or they're asking for anything, but I do consider them to be more um, sexually adventurous, we'll say, and more open and more sexually liberated. Um, because I've been conditioned to think that way, and I'm still trying to work through my conditioning. Um, but it's, it's just really hard to read something about business and about self-empowerment and finding your inner purpose and your inner why that is fucking life-altering and can make or break your success when it comes to building a small business um, and encounter something like this that's saying if you are the type of person who exposes a lot of skin you are considered a slut so just an antiquated line of thinking that I wanted to bring up and that I wanted to talk about um, especially in connection with what I'm going through and what my friend has gone through and what I know a lot of other women and people are going through is being considered something that they are not based on cultural and societal norms telling them that's who they are if they look a certain way that's how they're presenting themselves so I'm gonna keep reading it's really hard because there have been a couple of other reasons um, mainly just having to do with gender roles um, a lot of other reasons in this book why I've wanted to put it down why I've had to put it down and put it away for a little bit and then come back to it and learn more because it makes me really uncomfortable the way that she's exposing her generation's ideas of what norms say about people and how norms, how societal and cultural norms control um, our standing in society as women. Oh, but I'm going to keep reading because this business has got to get built and the only person who has to put in the work is me and I have to get over my damn self in order to get what I need to get and then get the fuck out <laughs> so I'm gonna get the fuck out of here I hope you're having a wonderful day I hope that no matter what anybody calls you you know who the fuck you are and you appreciate everything that you are for exactly what it is. You're amazing, you're deserving of love, you're deserving of respect. And if you're a slut, that's cool. If you own slut, that is also cool and awesome and so fucking empowering. Sexual liberation. I can imagine it, but I'm not there yet, <laughs> clearly. There are a lot of things that still make me uncomfortable, so let's keep having these uncomfortable conversations. Let's keep getting super intimate in our pillow talks, and um, I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you next time, best friend. <laughs>